After setting up your Facebook application, one of the next steps you can take is to enable Facebook login to your website and then to allow users to post Facebook actions back to their timeline. These open graph actions will be covered mostly by this video. Facebook login will be touched on briefly but is covered elsewhere in more depth. First, we'll set up Facebook login. To do this, we just enable the SC login module that is a part of JFB Connect. There's a lot of different settings for how it can be configured, but we're just going to publish it with the mostly default settings. We save that, we enable it, and now we have a Facebook login button over here. Click to log in. We're asked for our permissions as normal. This asks the minimum amount of permissions that are required. If we enable profile import into some third-party Joomla extensions, this may ask for more, but by default it just wants the public profile and email address permissions. We select OK. This will log the user in, create them a Joomla account, and actually send them an email just say welcoming them to the website that's customizable. So now we're logged in, and the next thing we can do is actually create an open graph action. We'll go into Facebook, the application, go into the open graph area. We're going to create a new story. We'll say we're going to eat a meal. Click create, and that sets up the action and object in Facebook. And we see these here. And before we can post to the timeline with messages and places and those types of things, we need to edit our action and we enable tags, user messages. Uh, we are not going to enable user generated photos. We will enable a place. But now we need to create the same object and action within JFB Connect. So we go into the objects area, the open graph objects area in JFB Connect. We create a new object for articles. The name of the objects are meals. This is just the display name that's used within JFB Connect. The object type is what is actually set as the open graph type property. This is not a Facebook object, a built-in one. This is one that we created ourselves. We're going to say any articles in the recipe category gets this object type. And then these are just some extra settings on how other open graph tags can be configured. So if we go back in here and now we go to open graph and create an action, we can create a new custom action. This is going to be the eat action for our recipes. The action is eat. Again, this is not a built-in Facebook action. This is one that we customize for our, thing, for our application. We're going to allow friend tagging. We're going to allow user messages. We'll allow place. I'm going to leave explicitly shared turned off for now. There is a description for each of these. We're going to say that this action can be performed on the only object we've created, which is a meal. And then over here, we can set it up to say, we can eat this meal multiple times, but we only want to allow people to eat it once every three minutes, let's say. That'll be good for testing. User, We're going to say the user cannot disable this since this is going to be a pop-up. They're, they're intentionally choosing to share this action, so there's no real reason to let them disable it. And now we save the action. And if we go into our article manager, we edit Let's say beef brisket. We simply have to add this tag for JFBC action, the action ID which was two of what we just created, and the action text for the button that we want to display. While we're here we'll add additional open graph tags like the image, which is a larger image to be used in Facebook blog posts, and we'll add the ingredients for the recipe. We use the ns colon syntax for our namespace which will be replaced by JFB Connect with the namespace of our application. And then if we go to the Open Graph Debug tool, we can scan our page and we'll see that the larger image and ingredients have been detected. With the Open Graph and Action tags added to our menu, we can now go back to the front end. When we click into the Beef Biscuit menu, we have an I ate this button. If we click on it, 
It'll come up and ask if we want to post to the timeline for the permission. Say OK, and now we can add our own custom message. And we can do general tagging. The options that are shown here for people, places, and the message were all configured in the action within JFP Connect. Once those are disabled in the configuration area, they would disappear here. Then we click Post to Timeline. You'll see a pop-up down here that notifies the user that the action has been posted to their timeline. From here there's a menu that you can actually see all of the user's Facebook timeline activity and it also gives them the option to delete that activity from the website application. So if we go back into Facebook now, we'll see that our action has been successfully posted.